morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to gather together both in the room and online to be filled with the peace of Christ, to share that peace of Christ out in the world. A very special welcome to Sage Paul, who is all ready for her baptism. She's very beautiful and awake and ready for the day. And welcome to all of her family. We celebrate Holy Communion when we worship, and you are welcome to join in that meal. If you're online, we encourage you to grab some bread and juice or wine to be a part of communion. As we transition to worship, I invite you to take a moment to get ready. So we get ready for worship by prayer, by listening for what God might have to say to you. Maybe you need to hear some words of forgiveness today or mercy or grace. So I invite you to prepare your hearts and your minds for these words that God has for you. bulletin where you'll find the call to worship. You can join in the bold print. The call to worship is a preview of the reading that you'll hear from First Peter. We are God's beloved family. Let us listen to the wisdom of the old. We are God's beloved family. Let us nurture the eagerness of the young. We are God's beloved family. Let us worship God together. We confess our sins before God and one another after a moment of reflection. Saving God, too often we have turned away from you and toward ourselves. We have not had unity of spirit sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, or a humble mind. We have repaid evil for evil. We have failed to serve. Draw us back into the joy of your beloved community and give us eager hearts to love our neighbors. Hear these words of forgiveness that are for you. God, who redeems all flesh, all people, gives you new life in Christ and forgives you all your sins. Rejoice in the grace and mercy of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand as you may and join in singing God of Grace and God of Glory.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to God's people on earth. That's thunder, so it's storming out, but let us pray. God of all the generations, you have called us to be stewards of your grace. Inspire us to serve one another with whatever gifts we have received for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. step into this story a bit. Let me welcome you again if you're worshiping over KDX radio or over Facebook. You'll hear that voice of Chris Hurtler as your assisting minister. We are at the very end of the book of 1 Peter, so we've made our way all the way through this letter of 1 Peter, and next week we're going to start on the Old Testament book of Ruth. So it's a beautiful little book. If you want to get ahead a little bit, you can read. It's a really short book in the Old Testament called Ruth, so we'll study that through the rest of August. What you need to know about this letter at 1 Peter, we're at the very end of the book. The fifth chapter is the very end. There's kind of two parts to this letter. The first part helps us to see how we might study the church. So this letter is going to have some words for the elders among us. You can listen to those. And then in the second part of that letter, we'll remember the context of this letter. It was written in the first century when it was not safe to do what we are doing right now. It was not safe to gather together in Jesus' name to worship because the Roman emperor didn't want anyone to worship anyone but him. So remember when this letter was written, it's a much different time. So the second part of the letter mentions the suffering of those early Christians as they were forming the church. You can stay seated and we'll sing together our acclamation song.
Now, as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and you all must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the first century world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Through Silvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, which means Rome, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God of life, in this time in the world, remind us how we need one another, how generations are meant to help one another, to be examples for one another. Speak to us in these words, meet us where we are, so that this world might know the peace of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. One day, my daughter and I went out for lunch. Knowing we were both quite hungry, I asked her, do you think we should order an app? Now, you just never know which question will lead to a major, major eye rolling. Should we order an app? Seemed a reasonable question to me, but I was wrong. She rolled her eyes at me and then patiently explained, Mom, don't ever use the word app again unless you're talking about something on your phone. What happened to the word app that used to refer to appetizer? Is that abbreviation lost forever to future generations? Do I seriously need to go to all the work of saying appetizer at restaurants? Well, perhaps if I want the next generation to understand me, I do. Generations need one another. For example, if you need to learn a new app, obviously something on your phone, then you ask a younger generation person, a wise teenager. If you need to understand what a checkbook is because you are a teenager, then you ask someone in an older generation. And you can ask them what to do if you've lost your checkbook, because chances are you have. Generations need one another. In case you didn't know it, there are five generations right now walking the planet. Each generation is known by a unique name based roughly on the year in which you were born. The oldest generation are the traditionalists, born before 1945. I can see some of you here. Then there are the boomers, born between 1945 and 1965. Generation X, that includes me, 
were born after 1965 and before 1980, and the next are the millennials, born after 1980 and before 2000. Finally is the la last generation, Generation Z, which really does sound as though it will be the last generation to ever exist, includes those born after 2001. So here we are, traditionalists, boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Generation Z. We are well represented in the community that is St. John. Among us are those who understand apps both as food and as things on our phone. There are those of you who can teach us things about apps. There are those who know where your checkbooks are and those who don't know what a checkbook is but can probably explain something about cryptocurrency to you. Way back in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses explained the importance of the generations needing one another. Some of the very last words Moses ever said included this instruction. Remember the days of old. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father, he will teach you and your elders. They will explain it to you. Now, did Moses mean the elders would explain appetizers and checkbooks? Maybe, but more likely the elders in the community had more important wisdom to share. Here's the thing, the elders in any community, according to this letter, have enormous responsibility. So you heard in the closing chapter of this letter we call 1 Peter, all about the elders. By now, at the end of this letter, you know what's at stake for this new Christian church, this first century community with all of its generations needed to stick together. They were to be, like you heard a few weeks ago, living stones, like a pile of generations, forming a foundation for the future church. Putting this letter into its historical context, we know that in the beginning of the Christian church, there was suffering, First Peter tells us. If we rewind back to the first century, new churches were not welcome anywhere in the Roman Empire where the emperor expected to be worshipped. Back then, Christians had to worship in secret to avoid that emperor's punishment. So chapter 5 wonders, who might steady the church in a time like that? And the answer comes in verse 2, where the writer exhorts the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge. Traditionalists, boomers, maybe even Gen Xers, if you're one of these elders and your mind has already drifted to the appetizers you're hoping to eat for lunch, I need you to come back with me. Elders, the writer of the letter of 1 Peter announces in verse 3, your role in the community is to be an example to the flock. An example. Perhaps by what you say, maybe by what you do, but most importantly, you are an example by the kind of community you are trying to create, by what you are doing to create a healthy and welcoming community. Paging back in the memories to my own home church growing up, I remember some of the elders that were examples to me growing up. I remember some of those elders who were examples. Do you remember the elders you looked up to if you grew in, up in a church? From the church of pews at Our Saviors in Sherwood, I can picture the elders who were leaders. I remember those elders who sang really loudly, my grandma, who prayed the Lord's Prayer far too loudly. And one of those elders in our community was Helen Nelson. She was a woman who was about my grandma's age. Her smile was tender and her words were kind. And I don't remember anything she said to me, which just affirms what Maya Angelou wrote, that at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did. They'll remember how you made them feel. 
What I remember is that she made me feel like I belonged there in that church. Helen Nelson, from a different generation than my own, was the elder I looked up to simply because she genuinely cared that I was there in that church, two rows ahead of her, week after a week. I'd rather not consider myself to be an elder now or ever, but that's a sure king of duties if I do not. The impression that we make on the younger generations, on Generation Z in particular, this is like laying living stones, shaping the foundation of the future church. I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge and to be examples of the faith. So this week, elders, let's ponder this question. Are you someone you would look up to now if you were a kid? Would your eight-year-old self admire you, the grown-up? What's the impression you're leaving on the next generation, not only in this church, but everywhere you go, both in person and online? As a congregation, I'm so proud of the many, many ways that you welcome the younger generation to be leaders in this place. Generation Z is a vibrant part of your community of faith. We can easily see it. We can easily hear it on Wednesday nights during the school year. Your congregation council and endowment fund leaders represent all the other generations. There are millennials and Gen Xers and boomers and traditionalists, which means among us, we all know what an app is, both the kind on your phone and the food kind. We can all find our checkbooks and some of us can explain cryptocurrency. All the generations are covered and we need one another. And every one of us from every generation, the elders and the future elders, we all find hope in this letter written so long ago. The words of 1 Peter give us sufficient hope for these days and for future days, for all the days of all the generations. Looking back, if you think about the generations, each one is shaped by the things that were going on at that time. So generations have been uniquely shaped by economic disasters, by terrorism or technology, by war. Based on our own generation, we look at the world from this unique angle. But no matter what you have seen, this letter promises hope beyond all those things. As each generation comes and then goes, the living hope of Christ outlives us all. This promise is among the first words you heard first a few weeks back from the first chapter of 1 Peter. By his great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Generations fade away, and yet... God's promise of mercy for you is unfading. Even through your worry and sorrow, even through suffering and anxiety, through the changes of the world that finally make it hard for me to order an app with my daughter, God's promise of mercy is for you, and it is unfading. There's hope, you see, even beyond Generation Z, because you and I know the secret that the end is never really the end after all. Christ has died, and then Christ has risen. You belong now to the everlasting generation, forgiven and beloved forever. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Borning Cry. And just notice we sing the first three verses before we get to verse four at the bottom.
very excited. We get to be a part of Sage Baptism this morning. So if you could find the red hymnal in front of you and turn to page 227 at the front of your book, you'll find the Liturgy for Holy Baptism on 227, where the page numbers are on the bottom. Let me say a little bit about baptism. God, who is rich and in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Thank you. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities, which this congregation will help you carry out. To live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, Place in her hands the holy scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this person, person in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Sage Rain and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. Sponsors and parents, I have three questions for you. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Joined by the assembly, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Sage, I'm going to get this out of your way, <laughs> just in case. All right. Yes. Sage Rain, you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Good job, kiddo. Did it. There you go. What happened? It was very exciting. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth and cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. 
sustain, sage, reign with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Sage, reign, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. I think this means we're friends forever. <laughs> it's great for me. I'm going to light a candle, though. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's, God's creative, creative and, and redeeming, redeeming word to all, all the world. world. Please join me in welcoming Sage to this community of faith. Hey. You have this little light of mine? Yeah. Oh, God. We have a song to sing to you. Please join in this little light of mine. Assured of God's promise to redeem all creation through Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of the young and old, no matter our generation or age, give us open hearts to heed the wisdom of those before us and nurture the faith of those behind us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Inspire us by the action of high school youth from St. John, who traveled to Des Moines, Iowa on a mission trip. We rejoice at the generosity of the adult advisors. Grant rest to recover from their labors and let our whole lives be a labor of love for our neighbor, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We welcome the newly baptized Charlie Ballweber and Sage Paul. Through baptism, you equip leaders of every age group. Inspire, strengthen, sustain all leaders. Raise up new leaders among us and make us willing to listen and learn from those not of our own generation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Wherever there are fires or floods, let your compassion be known. We pray for first responders and for victims of natural disaster, that you would grant hope beyond the demands of this day, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Illness, adversity, and tragedy may strike at any time. Embrace all who suffer, from the littlest child to the eldest adult, in your healing arms. We pray especially for Lillian Bondell, Krista Enabo, Joe Warner, and those whom we name in our hearts. We pray also for Amy Graves as she grieves the death of her mother. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have died in the faith at any age and know that they are in your tender care. Keep us mindful of their example until we, are until we are reunited with them in glory, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, we place all for whom we pray into your loving care, trusting in the promise of your salvation for all generations. Amen. Please stand as you may. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace both in the room and online.
You may be seated. As you are seated, thanks for the generosity from you that supports the mission of this congregation. Because of your gifts, you sent a group of people to Des Moines, Iowa for a mission trip. So thank you for the way that your giving makes mission possible far beyond St. John. join in the offertory hymn. Shepherding God, you provide us, your flock, with all that we require. Accept now these gifts we return to you in gratitude and bless them to good use in your name. Amen. We're going to skip down to the bottom of page 7 to the words of institution and then the Lord's Prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you in the room, you'll come to communion up the center aisle, and you can fill the rail from the end to the center. You can stand or kneel, whichever you prefer. And after you receive the bread and the wine or juice, you can go back to your seat up the side aisle. If you're worshiping online, I invite you to exchange the elements together. If you happen to be worshiping alone, just know that you are not alone. You are embraced by this community. These words are for you. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to this meal of mercy where Christ is the host of the meal. Come as you are.
receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray, O oh God. We give you thanks that you have set before us this feast. The body and blood of your Son, by your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Find some announcements on the back page of your bulletin. First, a welcome home to our mission trip high school youth and advisors. I see uh, Lainey here, Kaiten, anybody I'm missing? Yes, thank you so much for going on behalf of St. John. So you can bug Lainey and you can bug Kaiten with lots of questions about the trip and you'll hear stories to come. So thank you so much for going. Day camp begins here tomorrow, so if you drive by, you'll just hear like a rumble of noises of the hundred or so, a little more than a hundred kids who will be here from kindergarten through fifth grade. Thank you for snacks. Snacks make children happy, so we're excited for a happy bunch of kids tomorrow to begin. And the other date I want you to watch for is August 17th. You'll see on the back of the bulletin. Uh, August 17th, we're having a what's called a WOW workshop. So for anyone who's already sharing your time and your talent in a variety of ways at St. John, as an altar guild member or assisting minister or choir member, we're inviting all of you who are already sharing your gifts at St. John to wonder what other gifts there are in this community that would make this community a more full version of what God wants us to be. So we're going to invite others to share your gifts of time and talent in several different ways uh, on August 17th. So mark your calendar for that date if you are already sharing your time and talent here. Let's stand as you may for the blessing and then we'll sing the first verse of our sending song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing verse 1. Serve the Lord.